What's going on, engineers? This is part 7 of the Node.js basic series, and today it's all about child processes. If you're watching these videos in order, then this is going to be the first video in a few of uh, what I consider important built-in modules into Node.js. Basically what the child processes module in Node.js is, it's Node.js's way of allowing you to call out to the system to execute another script or to call some system command. And of course, due to the asynchronous nature of Node.js, it's able to execute other commands and go execute other stuff in the meantime. So let's jump in. In this video, we're really only looking at four things. We're looking at exec, exec synchronous, spawn, and spawn synchronous. And the names of those methods are exec, exec sync, spawn, and spawn sync, respectively. So to start, to use things that are in the child process module, you'll do, you know, const cp equals require child underscore process. So the first one we're going to look at is cp.exec, and I picked this one to do first because it's the simplest, and it's the one you're most likely going to use in most cases. cp.exec takes three arguments, one of which is mandatory and two are optional. The mandatory one is going to be the command or script that you want to run. In this case, I'm just doing ls-l, which will just print out a list of all the directories and files in a particular directory. It takes an optional object of options, and then it takes an optional callback function to run once the command is done running. And in that callback, there's three arguments inside that. It's going to be an error. It's going to be your standard out and your standard error. Now the difference between error and standard error is that error is if the actual operation failed, whereas standard error is going to be if there's actual uh, like error output from the script. You know, something was, was piped to the standard error file uh, descriptor. Now unlike spawn, which we'll look at later, cp.exec, the callback for cp.exec, it, it buffers the output before it returns it to you. So the callback is only going to be called once, and that's at either the successful completion or termination of the script that you run. As far as the options go, you don't actually have to provide this. You could just leave this out entirely. What I provided up here is I provided the defaults that it would have been anyways. And there's a couple additional options, but I, I wanted to show you these because these are kind of the most you know, popular ones. You can set the, you know, the current working directory of the script that's running. You can specify some environment variables. You can change the encoding. You can specify a timeout. You can give it a max buffer. That way it can't read like, you know, 10 gigabytes of data in. So in this case, this would be you know, 200K. And then you can give it a, a kill signal on what it should get after the timeout. So in practical operation here, all that's going to happen, it's going to execute ls-l, and then standard out is going to be populated with a list of files. It's, it's really that simple. And we can run that over here. Whoops. And there it is, number one exec, spawn exec. Now one last note about cp.exec is that it is asynchronous, meaning that it's going to return from cp.exec instantly, and it's going to continue executing the rest of the script. So moving on to exec synchronous, very similar to exec, except exec synchronous, it's going to call exec sync ls-l. It's going to provide the same options as above, but rather than specifying a callback, it's simply going to block right there and wait for the command to finish, and then it's going to populate data with standard out. So the standard out from up here ends up in data. If the command fails or there's an error, then error down here will get the either the error or the standard error output. Typically, you wouldn't want to use exec sync because it's going to block your whole application. As soon as you start running that, it's your application can no longer do anything else. It's going to sit there and wait until that finishes. The only time I, adv I would advise using exec sync is if you had a standalone script and you just wanted to execute a bunch of you know, processes in a row and that script was totally standalone and the fact that it's taking a while or blocking doesn't affect anything else, then that would be a good use case for that. But under normal circumstances, you're going to want to use the async version. Okay, so moving on down to spawn now. So spawn works a little differently. So you do cp.spawn. Spawn takes three arguments. Still, one is mandatory and two are optional. The mandatory one is going to be the name of the program that you want to run. The optional one is going to be an array of arguments to pass to that program. And then you can specify some options. Now, unlike exec, which gives you a callback function with standard out and standard error, instead, cpspawn returns a child process object. 
Now in that child process object, there's two streams which you can attach to to you know consume output, and that's going to be standard out and standard error. Now this dot on method is probably new to everybody, so I want to pause here and just talk about that a little bit. So having watched these videos, you now know that Node.js is based heavily on this this concept of events, and this is how you listen for new events. So in this case, the stream standard out has an event called data, which you can register a callback for. So what this is saying is, on the data event for the standard out stream, give me the data that went to standard out. Now, unlike exec, this is unbuffered output, meaning that as soon as there's output ready, it's going to send it right to this callback, and it's going to keep sending it over and over and over again. So this is not a callback that's only called once. This is a callback that's called every single time the data event is triggered for the standard out stream. Now, as far as the standard error stream goes, everything I just said about standard out is exactly the same. It's just each time something goes to standard error, the data event is triggered on the standard error stream. That, that's all. And then standard error is going to be the, you know, the data that was sent there. So because this is unbuffered and because data can just keep flowing to both of these as much as it wants, how do you ever know when it's done? And that's what the dot on closes for. So the child process object, you know, it has these two streams, standard out and standard error, but it also has an event called close. And in this event called close, this callback is called once the command finishes and closes. And that callback has one argument code, which will be the return code for the, the process that just ran. Now this is, of course, a lot more code than, than exec, but it does something that exec can't, and that's read on buffered output over a given period of time, rather than buffering the entire thing and then returning it all, you know, as soon as it's done. And then the last is the synchronous version of this. So spawn sync acts a lot like exec sync, except spawn sync is a little more powerful. So with spawn sync, it calls ls-l, and just like exec sync, it blocks at this point in time and it waits until the command finishes executing. Unlike exec sync, which just returns the standard out from the command, spawn sync returns an object that contains a number of properties, two of which are standard out and standard error. Now keep in mind that standard out and standard error, these are not streams like they are up here. This is the actual string of the standard out and the string of the standard error if there was any. There's also a couple other things you can get from here, like the PID of the process and then the status code that it returned. Now, the last thing I want to point out is that if you notice, here I did number four, spawn sync. Here I did number three, spawn. Number two, exec sync. And number one, exec. But when I executed them, we got number two, number four, number three, and number one. So the two synchronous ones, you know, got done first. And that makes sense because they're synchronous. So they will block until they're done. And then I executed the two asynchronous ones. This was just to reinforce the idea that Node.js is asynchronous and things don't always happen in the order you expect them to. And that's it for child processes. There's not a whole lot to them, and this should be enough information for you to use them effectively. As always, if you have any questions on this video, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.